then welcome. You're here at the last large talk at the Fusion Content Tent. And nice that you're here. Um, I didn't, don't have anything more organizatorial to say, so it's going to be finished in a minute after this talk, I mean. Um, so I'm very happy to introduce Hendrik Ensteifen from the initiative Berlin Werbefrei, um, who will tell us a, lot, a little more about the question how to uh, have a city and or a society uh, without commercial advertising um, how can you imagine a future with a, um, a, a, a future without advertising on, on every corner? That's what we, yeah, it's, many people would uh, wish for that. Yeah, uh, from us, uh, hi too. We, as I said, um, we, Stefan and I uh, uh, are. Uh, Organized in Berlin Werbefrei, the initiative, uh, and will uh, will tell you a little about the problematic uh, things about uh, advertising outside. We how we imagine a city without um, with uh, uh, massively reduced advertising. I'm really happy uh, that we can do this talk at Fusion. It's. Um, about uh, creating your own city and the uh, public space. And the fusion is uh, um, a little city with about 80,000 inhabitants that uh, is advertising free. And that's a thing which, uh, when I was here a couple of years ago, the first time, which uh, surprised me in a very positive way because uh, I only knew much more commercial festivals uh, where there was advertising everywhere, and you have the feeling that uh, someone wants to sell you something from all sides. And uh, I couldn't really believe it the first time I was here that to find a place where um, that was designed uh, that to not do this uh, in that way, um, but a place that's uh, just designed to be a place where you can stay and uh, be together and uh, talk about things and discuss things and uh, exchange things. Uh, all the uh, all the prints uh, from the bottles were removed uh, even and uh, replaced by fusion uh, ticket uh, 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 prints. Uh, if you imagine Fusion would be full of advertising and full of advertising, uh, full of billboards, as it's uh, without cities as well, it would change the character of the festival uh, completely. Uh, it wouldn't be a place where we, where you would uh, come together and interact, social, and stay, want to stay. And the whole idea is uh, pretty absurd. Um, so if the idea is so absurd, uh, the question is why will we uh, do we allow this in our cities? Shouldn't our cities be um, a place to come together and a place of public life uh, as well? But it's not only the public space um, uh, full of advertising, but all, all our life. We have advertising everywhere. We have the in advertising in the internet, TV, magazines, radio, on our smartphones. Our uh, uh, life is full of uh, advertising. And um, the question is, do we need this uh, is it just necessary evil? And what does it do with us? Um, all the advertising uh, that we can see all the, throughout the day. That's for that, I want to tell you about uh, outside advertising outside uh, in special. Uh, um, how does the advertising actually work? And we talked a lot about this topic, uh, even though I'm not an expert for advertising psychology that the same concepts appear again and again. Um, it's a repetition uh, that advertising works with. The same brand or product is shown again and again. And uh, you get used to it. And people uh, uh, prefer, prefer things that they know and they uh, they're acquainted with, um, and just repeating the brand uh, will manifest it in your brain. The other side, it's um, usually about uh, fill the adver the brand with emotions. You see laughing faces or cool situations, 
uh, in which people have a lot of fun and the product next to it or something that represents uh, freedom, the rider through the desert and the pack of Marlboro that has nothing to do with it, but um, it's uh, about uh, connecting these things uh, and through rep uh, that through repetition. So our emotion is, uh, there's a lot of emotion in um, advertising and there's uh, only one claim per uh, advertising. So advertising is not information. Uh, advertising usually doesn't inform you. Um, it doesn't have the information that is relevant to the consumer. It's not there what the product costs, uh, what the version uh, exists, how m what al alternatives there are, um, what ecological footprint it has. Uh, the relevant information uh, is not uh, given there. For each and every one, uh, the each company, it makes a lot of sense to uh, advertise. Uh, who doesn't advertise dies, it says, and it's uh, about uh, being uh, competi beating the competition. Um, it, it, in uh, overall, uh, the society in the society, for, there's no uh, worth. There's no worth for the overall society. There's a lot of arguments for that, but uh, you could discuss this. But uh, just imagine the commit advertising inv industry would go on strike. Nobody would care. Nobody would miss it. And on the other side, uh, there is a lot of criticism towards adverts. There's um, uh, they create a lot of needs um, that uh, just uh, fuel the um, fuel the consumer industry. It exists. It's uh, resource. Um, so yeah, it just fuels consumption. It fuels the consumer mindset. And there, there are lots of criticisms. And we are especially critical about advertisements in the public space, that it's its own problems, uh, field of problems. So yeah, we're seeing advertising is at least problematic. And it's w at least one other thing. It's uh, pervasive. Advertising permeates all areas of our lives. And I would just like to know, do you have any idea how many advertisements the average city dweller sees per day? Have you ever thought about that? If you have an idea, maybe you can just tell me, say, a number. 100, OK. Going for 100, 400, 1,000, OK. OK. Indeed, it's even more than that. So there is no exact number, because it's very dependent on the person. But there is different estimates. And all estimates range are in the range of several thousands, up to 12,000. One number that people are hearing regularly is about 3K. So that's a very uh, conservative estimate. So that's the baseline you can, you can assume. And we thought, OK, what would it look like if we took 3,000 advertisement impressions and we just compressed them and distilled them down? So we created a quick video. And I'm just going to show you the beginning of it. I hope you can see it well. If you're sitting in the back and you can see it, feel free to come to the front. So it's about visualizing this number, 3,000 ads. So as you can see in the public space, all kinds of surfaces that can be used for advertisements are being used for advertisements. There's ads in bus stops on and inside buses, freestanding um, advertisements, construction sites, street lamps, um, even on stairs, buses, trains, more buses, trains, um, all kinds of public spaces, really. So at least in Berlin, it's quite extreme. Of course, it also depends um, on the city. but really all usable space is being used for advertising. And of course, it also means the city is very much encroached upon by advertisement. So the, um, the city dwellers 
are bombarded by advertisements all the time. It occupies a large part of their perception. And if you think also about the resources that are being used here for the weekly or bi-weekly turnover of all these uh, public advertising spaces, that's quite a lot of resource, uh, a waste of resources here. And also with the digital advertising uh, advertisements, the uh, power usage is also a pretty important factor. So yeah, you can see it's quite uh, exhausting to watch all of this, and I'm not going to make you sit through the entire 3,000. If you want to do that, if you want to show this somewhere, this is also on on the internet at uh, 3000ads.org, and I think we're just going to stop it here uh, at 800 out of 3,000. And I'd like to continue with a quote from the um, German Fachverband Außenwerbung, the um, industry organization about outside advertisement. As a mass media, it spans um, a network of hun several hundred thousand out-of-home advertising spaces across Germany, uh, always everywhere, 24 hours per day, um, every day of the year, inevitable and uh, unmissable. And that's pretty much what it is about what the problem with advertising is. It's something you cannot get around, especially in public spaces. So you don't have the power to decide anymore whether you want to see ads or not. It's just there, and you are su subjected to it, more or less. And if you think about it, in, on the TV or radio, you can just turn it off or switch, uh, change the channel. On the internet, you can install an ad blocker. In a magazine, you can just um, not buy the ad or just ignore it, just turn the page. But in a public space, we are completely uh, helplessly subjected to it, and we don't have any influence on it. People in the cities were never actually asked if they are okay with this, with the city being more and more um, plastered with advertising. Okay, one important aspect, especially in the public ads, is the, the change in the, um, yeah, the, the change in the city architecture. The cities are planned by city planners and architects, and if you allow ads in the public space, that of course. Is a, is a large impact on the uh, image of the city. Another important point is the commercialization of the public sphere. From our perspective, the public space is mostly a social function. Uh, as Hendrik just said, it's a it's a place for for getting for getting together for communal living. It's a living space and not a uh, consumable. But if we allow advertisements in every corner, then we send the message that private companies that can afford it, that can afford to use this public space for their purposes, they can take it over and they can design it uh, like they wish. Um, and that's really problematic if you think about it, because that means only very few have the opportunity to do that. Exactly. Another problem that we see is the economical power of course, especially the very large, very effective advertising spaces are only affordable by companies with a lot of money. It only makes sense for those. And often that's multinationals, which on the one hand make cities look more and more alike because every city has the same Coca-Cola or Nike advertising advertisements, and so cities lose their individual face. On the other hand, Local stores are practically n not visible in the outside advertising at all. We're also supported by a lot of local stores that that cannot present the, their own um, couture collection from the, the corner store, but the H&M collection has big spaces every year, every, every season. Um, same for the bookstore on the corner. It's just not happening. Another thing that advertising is a form of communication, public advertising in the public space is a very one-sided form of communication. So there is a statement being put out there, and that's it. It's just there. There is no opportunity for the viewers to respond to it, to comment it, on it, um, or to oppose it. And as we already touched upon, only those uh, those dominate the public opinion who can afford to um, occupy these spaces. So it doesn't reflect the opinion of the majority. 
it looks pretty similar with um, in regards to power that those companies that put up the advertising spaces decide which ads to accept and which to reject, especially in political sphere. Uh, if you're looking at political advertisements, political messages, it can be very <coughs> problematic. Yeah. Here's another example for the inevitability of advertisement. You hear sometimes public space, if you, if you, um, if, if ads annoy you, you can just look away, but it's not that easy. In Berlin, there's these gigantic ad spaces in construction sites um, growing more and more in Berlin. That's a very good example for private advertising spaces. It's indeed, there's some advertising spaces on the public ground uh, where the, the profits also go to the public, um, to the community. But the mo majority of advertising spaces are on private ground. and. This is a very crass example of occupying the public space, but the profit only goes to the owner of the house. Um, he's the only one who benefits from it. And normally, if you're looking at advertising, you kind of enter into a deal. If you're um, watching TV, you get free TV. Online, you get some sort of services. Even on Spotify, if you're uh, listening to Spotify and you listen to the ads, you get free access to hundreds of thousands of songs. The especially private advertising spaces in the public space, uh, there is no return. You don't get anything from it. Mostly the uh, public, the, uh, the community go doesn't benefit from it at all. So it's a really bad deal. Aside from the fact that maybe the people living in this house would like to maybe uh, look out the window sometimes. So now that we've um, roughly described the problem, we get to the interesting questions. So what can we do against that? So which possibilities do we have to defend ourselves um, against this co like constant bombardment um, through advertisements, as we like to call it? So there are several pol solutions. One that you may have heard of is ad busting, um, which is uh, basically revolves around changing existing ads in a way that kind of um, shows what's behind the ad or shows or emphasizes aspects that the ad itself may be silent about. Like for example, here on the left, um, that's Capizona, which is a soft drink sold in Germany, which is um, which actually tries to make, pe pay, make people pay attention to the way um, it wastes resources. Um, and on the right side, there's a McDonald's ad that has changed in a way to make people pay attention to um, the antibiotics that are used. Um, here's another ad busting of uh, of the German army, which is really nice because you can see that ad busting usually tries to essentially change the ad in a way and, and, and the poster in a way where the change looks like it belongs to the poster itself. Um, in addition to that, of course, you can also completely uh, just take over these ad spaces and use them for your own political messages or to mobilize people. Here's a nice example from Berlin, quite recent, where an ad space was used to spread information about a protest um, and in addition pay, make people pay attention to um, rising rents. Of course, that wasn't paid for, but it was just used. Um, and I think simultaneously, there's obviously a second message here, which is that communication in public spaces shouldn't be a one-way street. Instead, if big companies can simply buy public space to place their messages there, then why shouldn't we be able to do the same? There's another type which you can kind of like separate from that a bit, which are creative interventions and in art in public spaces and in ad spaces. In many cases, that's a bit more subtle as a type of criticism where people use aesthetics as a stylistic device. And this too revolves around showing what could be done with these spaces instead of putting ads there. So for example, here's an example from Berlin where an artist put, took um, an ad poster, put art, like essentially drew art on that ad poster and then put that ad poster back. Um, Thankfully, she also um, referenced us on her on her p art piece, but that shows that these spaces exist that can be used for art, um, and there really are no boundaries or no limits for the creativity you can use here. 
Here's something that's slightly less subtle to, um, for process that say buy more pointless stuff. <laughs> This is um, no, the No Ad Day, which is an international action which is organized by several ad critical organizations that on one day of the year aim to cover up as many ads or free as many ad spaces of the advertisements in their city as possible and just leave them white. Um, that's actually pretty, like kind of pretty, especially if it's several ad spaces next to each other. Here's an example from London by um, the group's advertisers for London. They basically take ad posters um, in the size that you essentially usually have on the tube, and then they just put them on top of the ads that are already on the tube. OK, so beyond all of these different kinds of intervention, there are obviously also different possibilities and different options. There are several cities in the world that actually show that this whole thing is not some in unreachable utopia, but that it's completely possible to have a somewhat ad-free or completely ad-free city. I think the m most well-known examples are um, Grenoble and Sao Paulo. It, Sao Paulo put, in, put a pl law in place in 2007 that was called Clean City, and they essentially freed the entire city of advertisements within a year. Um, and if several media reports are to be believed, then the inhabitants of Sao Paulo are actually quite happy with that. Another well-known city known in uh, Europe is Grenoble in France that started um, in 2014 to essentially just let um, ad contracts expire that were still in force. And instead, they replaced these ad spaces with uh, trees, so trees instead of ads. There are also several states um, in the US that basically banned billboards. So bigger ad spaces, so there it's primarily about traffic security and also what the, um, what the landscape looks like. Lanzarote, the island of Lanzarote in Europe did the same thing. And then there are several cities in the world that are at least um, trying to reduce outside ads. Par Paris um, actually just abolished one third of its ad spaces a few years ago. And there are several other cities around the world that have done similar things. Then Geneva right now has an initiative. Two years ago, concessions for ad spaces were put out again for sale, which meant that for two weeks, all the ad spaces in the entire city were completely white, so completely unused. And the citizens of Geneva actually liked that so much that they founded a citizens initiative. And similarly to um, Berlin Werbefrei, they, they also try to, put, they essentially are putting this whole this whole thing up for a vote, um, to have the entire city ad free, just like we're doing as well. There's a, there's another option which is essentially suing people. Um, as a matter of fact, many ad spaces, at least in Berlin, violate existing laws. That's primarily because pub public 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 ad spaces, they're public ad spaces and private ad spaces. And there's very little control, there are very li little, few controls as to whether these things conform with existing laws. Um, for example, these ads cannot uh, disturb the cityscape and there cannot be um, a disturbing accumulation of ads in one particular place. So, but it, the entire, all of these laws are not entirely clear uh, and it would also be quite difficult probably to get somewhere efficiently by using these laws. So there are actually, there's actually quite a number of options, um, all of the ones that we mentioned, essentially. Some are very creative and some are more boring. And we would like to talk about our own approach and present that. So as we mentioned, we are trying to um, have a referendum or ballot measure, um, the initiative um, Berlin Ad Free, that's us. And then this whole thing is based on a law, which we wrote, and that's basically our vision for public space um, and embodies this vision for, pub for public space. For starters, this law has two parts that I'll present. The first part is about ads in public spaces. The second part is about um, ads and sponsoring in public institutions and s schools, um, kindergartens, um, and universities. I'll just focus on the first part. So 
according to our idea, ads should be banned entirely and advertisement should be banned entirely. There are a few exceptions that we define specifically, which basically are aimed at making this as realistic as possible and also make it financially viable. One important point is that we want the exceptions that exist and all the money that's generated through these exceptions also should arrive at public institutions. So what are these exceptions? First exception is our advertisements um, of stores on their own front uh, storefronts, essentially. So basically, where a service is being provided, you can still advertise that service. So if you have a small store that can still try to draw people's attention, that's I think that's pretty um, easily comprehensible and should make sense, um, and which is exactly that we want to uh, strengthen the local economy. Um, but that's only allowed up to a size of 10 meters to basically avoid a branding of scale of the city's skyline to like to avoid something that for example happened here that's not necessary to pay, draw people's attention or uh, to your own store or provide information about it this really is about the constant presence um, of these brands the second exception um, are ads for events um, and um, things for public public benefit um, up to a size of uh, a zero um, all of this stuff, especially, we have this as an exception because uh, advertisements for events are defined through the provision of of a name, uh, of, a, of a place and a time. So they're actually providing information to people and many people are actually interested in that. So many of these events are also short term and are happening in the near future and also it's it helps with financing. So this, for example, would not be allowed on the left the poster is too big, it's larger than um, A0, which is not necessary for providing information. And on the right side, um, we see something that is moving and has a lot of light. That too isn't necessary to inform, simply inform people. The third exception is advertisement for products and services. Is allowed for up to one year to finance uh, train stations, other kinds of public transportation stops, and public toilets and sanitary institutions, which is simply because these things need to be refinanced. For example, in Berlin, the bus, bus stops don't belong to the city or the, but basically to, basically to the company that puts up public ad spaces and they essentially build bus stops. And so in, in return, they can put up as many ads as they want. Um, in order to avoid that these bus stops are simply deconstructed after that, we specifically put in place this one exception. So the, like, the financing of these bus stops is still insured. Um, you can only have ads there until the costs for this bus stop are essentially earned again if this whole thing has been refinanced. But overall, there can be ads only for up to one year as a total maximum. A similar exception is available for public institutions where these large areas are allowed. That's exactly the kind of ads that we actually want to stop. But these uh, spaces actually make a lot of money. And for example, this, this is the Berlin Castle, and uh, financing is very dependent on these ads. Our hope is that other buildings, like for example, the town hall, um, you wouldn't have to go to these lengths. And if so, then at least here, um, compared to 90% of current large area spaces, the money at least goes to public institutions. Also, uh, very concretely in our law, um, neighborhood announcements, because those are much closer to our vision of the public space where the citizens communicate with each other and we don't have this one-way street of communication from large multinationals to the public. Okay, that might have sounded like a lot of exceptions, but in the end it's just three. First, it's advertising at the or, um, place of service, then event advertisements, uh, public benefit advertisements, up to a certain size, not lit and not moving, and um, product and service ads for refinancing and public um, bus stops, um, 
public toilets and so on. For all exceptions, they cannot be digital, they cannot be um, moving pictures or changing pictures, it cannot impact the um, the, the yeah the, the public uh, the impression of the public space. There cannot be too many in one place, and of course, <coughs> they cannot be discriminating against anyone. And to see that it would make a big difference, in spite of these exceptions, we have prepared a few before and after pictures to visualize that. Here you can see very well, this is the current situation at the East Side Gallery in Berlin, a very important and emblematic space where this large lit ad display has been placed. This is what it looks like now, and we imagine it like this. I think that looks a lot more comfortable. It doesn't block the view of the city so much. This is the Moritzplatz, if you know it, in Berlin, Kreuzberg. We also a nice example. It's really a uh, location where each square centimeter is used for ads. And if we just look at our vision of this, that looks much better. On the lower left, you can see all these uh, large spaces. They would have been gone. So you could see the nice green uh, little greenery. In the lower right, you still have some ads, but it's just event advertisements and they're all the same format. And the advertising column is also remains, but it doesn't move anymore. It's not lit up anymore. And again, with the maximum size of A0. This is also a nice example from Kreuzberg. You can see on the left where the, the view is completely dominated by the ad. And here the uh, photo we shown before. I think this is Warschauer Straße, also in Berlin. And yeah, it looks very different. And you have to say it's not a Photoshop. We just waited for them to be done with the construction and took another photo. OK. So now you have a pretty good idea. In closing, um, what's the status? We're currently collecting signatures since January. We currently have six months to um, collect signatures. We need at least 20,000. So the Berlin Senate will actually have to take on the petition. We have two more weeks to collect those. We already have the 20,000. We can, we can say that. Thank you. But of course, but of course we want to have 30,000, 40,000, as many as possible, because the more we collect, the larger the impact. So yeah, we want to really um, double down again for all the everybody living in Berlin. We have signature lists here. There's also postcards and stickers. Take as many as you wish. There's another list at the end, um, at the back. And please, yeah, we will hand those in. There will be a nice event. And after that, either the Senate has to, if they like it, and we found uh, we got as many signatures that they're like, OK, it, uh, lots of people are behind this. In theory, they could enact the law immediately, our proposal. Um, we're not sure how realistic it is that this would happen in this form. We know that the three parties, um, the, the ruling coalition, are not very much against this idea. But um, even though they find it important, it's not clear that they would just enact it in this way in a form. If they don't do this and they reject it completely, we would have to collect signatures again, uh, 200,000 in this case, um, and have a, uh, yeah, a public move for public ballot. So what can you do, especially for people in uh, from Berlin? There's one very important and very concrete means of supporting us by uh, signing our petition. We're still collecting for another two weeks until the 13th of July. That's when we want to hand them in. So if you want, please help us collect, even if it's just once. Get a few lists. Let your friends sign. Let your acquaintances sign. Get it. Pass it around on work. Go to the park. Go to the market. Just uh, walk around with an hour for an hour with a list and fill it up. Otherwise, of course, you can also uh, join us. We always need people, especially going to round two. If we needed to collect two hundred thousand signatures, then we also need just people, not just need people to collect the signatures, but also graphic designers, people doing public relations, um, whatever 
it is that you do, you can use your skills with us. For everybody who's not from Berlin, there's also a lot of possibilities. The first and foremost, of course, is getting this topic onto the political agenda and create a certain awareness for it, that it's not a law of nature, that our cities are full of advertising, and that there are ways against that, um, making everyone aware, speaking to politicians, and yeah, just, just raising the topic. Then, of course, you can also start your city with all that. That's, of course, our ideal idea, that this idea uh, that this reproduces itself and also in other cities. And you've also seen there's a lot of ways to actually reclaim the public space and uh, do some creative action. Yeah, and it's important maybe also to add to that that it's not as a topic as it may be sound in the first place. There's, I think, something that also politicians are becoming more and more aware of. It's very visible if you can see from one day to the next the, the difference. But on the other hand, very few people will actually be impacted by this. A lot of people like our proposal. There is a lot of people that don't really care one way or the other. But there's very few people that say, oh, no, public ads are great. We need more of that. I think if you want to become active here, uh, support something that actually has a chance of being successful and where you can see a clear, uh, a clear difference very quickly, I think that's a very good option. So yeah, like I said, feel free to grab some of our advertising materials. Uh, we have stickers and flyers. But also before that, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask them now. Um, otherwise, we're done with our talk. Thank you so much. I already see for the first hands for people with questions. OK, thank you. I myself, I'm trying to live without advertisements, not to see them, not to hear them, keeping my home ad free when, when people come visit. And when I, when, I make, when I create workshops, when I have workshops, I'm asking them to not bring any kinds of ads to these workshops. So my only wish today, um, I couldn't really evade advertising completely. Uh, I could look away when you showed it, when you, when you shown it. Uh, but you also mentioned some brands uh, in the meantime. And I would ask that in the future you don't name any specific uh, brands so people like me can choose to avoid that and still listen to you. So uh, not a question, just a, just a wish, just an ask. Uh, thanks so much for the comment. I think that's an interesting point. Of course, we do this to illustrate our point and because we think it's important to show what the state, current state is in Berlin. Of course, we are aware of the fact that we reproduce ad imagery, advertisement imagery. I think that's a thin line to treat, but of course it's difficult. But yeah, thank you so much for the comment. So you've shown that ads, especially these large uh, areas, areas, uh, it's very ad, it's very asymmetric thing. So you have these large firms or the the German army that can just um, pay lots of tax money for that, and you have to actually look at the, at the ads. Um, so Germany is one of the only countries in the European Union where tobacco ads are still allowed in the public space, and that's not a mistake. It's like you said, nobody really loves it, maybe a very few people, but uh, those few people have a large lobby. Do you have any idea or concept where you say, okay, we're not just going uh, to talk to the, the usual suspects, but also, for example, the liberal Democrats in Berlin um, that are really up for, for any kind of shenanigans politically? Isn't that maybe a way to also talk to the lobby organizations and use that for leverage? Because you can you can already expect if we get this kind of public petition, they will there will be lots of talk about um, what about the jobs and what about um, freedom of speech and so on and so on. There will be lots of lobby pressure against you, and also from the companies that own these uh, advertising spaces. So Thanks how do so you do much. that? 
thanks so much for the question. Of course, we're aware of the fact that if we um, get as far as the ballot initiative, there's going to be a massive counter campaign. Of course, we have a really powerful enemy that can essentially has access an unlimited amount of ad spaces and has a lot of money. But we also know that we have the better arguments. And uh, with regards to the first, your first point, especially because the advertising lobby, you mentioned the tobacco lobby, but of course, generally, companies that buy ad spaces, I personally also think that at least on a national level, this whole thing is not possible and wouldn't be possible to implement something like that. But luckily, we have this ability of to essentially create ballot initiatives in many, on, many, on many local levels. And I think that's something where you can get somewhere. Um, and on top of that, we are also only talking about ads in public spaces, so outside, right? So that's actually something that's not that important for um, ad agencies anymore. Um, a lot of that is going somewhere else. And you may have noticed that a lot of cities are actually advertising these spaces themselves. Um, advertisements in magazines or in other spaces are much more targeted. And advertisements in public spaces are something is kind of like trying to go in the direction as well with more digital ad spaces. But generally, it's not that important for the ad industry. And I think even in our own organization, there are people who work themselves in the ad industry. And they, too, are critical of these advertisements outside in public spaces. And I think using the argument of, using this argument in favor of work um, and yeah, pe keeping people employed is not that strong because the lab like people who are essentially putting up these posters, their jobs are in danger anyway through digital digitalization. And so we're, we're, we're hoping that maybe politicians um, can adopt this campaign to kind of like put themselves into scene, um, but, or alternatively, that at least we'll have a public debate if we have the, if we put this ballot initiative up, right? So I'm also convinced that we generally have the better arguments and that there are many people who may not have an opinion on this yet, but this is uh, an opportunity to, for them to form an opinion. And I think um, there are 200,000 people who would immediately sign um, if they hear Ber Berlin without ads, and we need to reach these 200,000 people. And then the most important thing is that more than half of um, the voting population also thinks that this is positive. You also mentioned the parties, the political parties. Of course, the political parties in Berlin um, generally already have a position, um, at least um, on the city set of city district level. Of course, the FDP, the Liberal De Democrats, um, the AFD, the far right, and the Conservatives are against it. I think the AFD um, and the FDP, you don't even have to try to convince them. But even the CDU, the Conservatives, I could imagine that it might be possible to convince big parts of them with the correct arguments. For example, traffic security, protecting memorials. Of course, you need to use different arguments, but I wouldn't completely ignore them and their voters um, from the very beginning. OK, I see two more questions here, three questions. If there's anyone else, please just um, raise your hand. I can see it. Yeah, uh, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you for the initiative, because of course, that's a lot of work. It's in there. And I think it's a very nice vision. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. It's always very nice to hear people who thank us because it's very good motivation for, for us to keep going. Yeah, so I would like to know, we talked only about visual ads, but I can already imagine what the next step will be if this is outlawed, then they will start with audio ads, more and more. Is that something that you've be, that you thought about already? Is that something that's already in your proposal, maybe? Um, so uh, audio ads in public spaces? Yeah, in, in public space probably has different rules, um, but. Well, obviously there are always loopholes. I think the loophole that I'm most critical of is that many Coca-Cola festivals might be organized, right? So like events that are combined with products, so you can combine um, advertisement for both of these things. There are always going to be these loopholes. I don't know about audio advertisements. I'm not even sure that that's even allowed right now. Even these digital ad spaces 
are not supposed to show moving imagery, but only essentially the changes between different um, dif different different posters, because that's also about catching people's attention. So I don't think that audio advertisements are allowed in public spaces. But of course, we may have to ask our lawyer. Of course, there are loopholes. Obviously, we are also concerned about sensitizing people towards this issue. And I think once we have this first step, we obviously still need to keep the ball ball rolling um, and think about this even further, and yeah, even when it's implemented. And the last question here in the back. OK. <coughs> from me also, uh, thank you very much from my side, too. I am from, uh, I have from the graphic visual art area. And Arta has a very interesting documentation about urbanization. And a part of that is also ad busting. For example, uh, how to deal with this uh, in Paris or New York. And friends and I have been kind of infected by this very interesting idea because we know how easy it is to to work with simple aesthetics in a public space. But f until now, for me, it's just been too too hot to to even Google for the the legal situation here. So maybe can you talk a little bit about that? Because the problem, of course, is everything belongs to somebody, and you can't even uh, camp in uh, in the forest because you're violating somebody's rights. I, I really like these examples. How you can deal with. Um, public ads, and sometimes I also paint on them, but I'm also a little bit scared all the time. Just uh, to put it very bluntly, I'm currently damaging somebody's property, and so I always try to um, yeah, cause as, as little damage as possible and not step into any kind of shit. So how do you know about that? So what's definitely illegal is stuff where you put things on top of other things so if you put something on an ad thing from the outside, maybe with tape, so it can be removed again, that's definitely possible. Um, also using chalk to draw on something, then nobody can get at you for anything. I'm also not a lawyer, obviously, but we've definitely talked about this. In Berlin, there are several ad, bust, ad, ad busters that are very active in this regard. and. W when they, whenever they exchanged ad posters, then my understanding is that you're generally in a legal gray zone, but as long as you don't destroy the uh, old initial poster, um, but maybe leave it there and just put the other one on top of it, then you haven't destroyed anything. You c could only be got for some exceptional cases. Um, in Berlin, there are also regular ad busting workshops. They're held by, well, you should Google that. Uh, it should be easy to find. Um, and in those places, they might also discuss these issues in a bit more detail, th these questions. As far as my understanding goes, if you're careful about it, there's, it's not that legally problematic. As In addition to that as well, if you want to be um, super certain, the definition of um, destruction of property is if it's not, if it can't be undone. So if you do it in a way where you could remove it if you wanted to, you're probably on the safe side. So it's definitely not something that's where you're criminal, like where, where you can be, where you're liable under criminal law. And if you take the poster with you, then it, of course it's theft. Yeah, so I know mostly from the graffiti area, as long as you, as soon as you're scratching something or using some paint that is hard to remove, then it's it's getting difficult, but these uh, also the, the very very sticky um, yeah stickers are problematic. But if you just use simple um, simple clear tape, then yeah. Yeah, there are also other types of stickers that you can just pull off very easily again. And if you just put another poster on top, then it's also not um, destruction of property. And art for public benefit. Uh, might also be hard to kind of um, pursue Right, criminally. exactly. Okay, I don't see any more questions. And then I'd also like to say thank you. Great that you were here. Thank you.